We live in a thriving world of video and it's never been easier to capture amazing visuals wherever life may take you. I've created a two-part guide that will show you how to produce some awesome 4K sequences with ease and then edit it all together in DaVinci Resolve. Now this video has been sponsored by the lovely guys over at SanDisk who have provided me with a super fast storage that's essential for artifact free 4K capture and quick transfers to and from the computer. Now of course it's 2018 and you're going to want to shoot in 4K. 4K is four times the resolution of Full HD, but this does mean that you will need a 4K capable camera. Fortunately, there's loads to choose from in this day and age, and the one I use is this, the Sony A6500. This is a tiny mirrorless device, but don't let its size fool you, as it easily surpasses most DSLRs for video quality. I'll leave my full kit list in the description, but you're after something that can capture 4K at at least 30 frames a second, and for the maximum amount of flexibility, you're going to want something that has swappable lenses for different looks and varying amounts of zoom. While I'd definitely recommend my A6500, popular choices also include the Panasonic GH5 and Sony A7S II, though professionals may want to consider a cinema camera like the Blackmagic Ursa Mini. With four times as many pixels to store though, you're going to need a higher capacity card than before, and one that can handle the increased data rates. Look for a UHS equipped SD card, with my personal favourite at the moment being the SanDisk Extreme Pro UHS 2, as I can offload an entire day's shoot from this in about a minute, which is absolutely crazy. Now when it comes to these things, lenses, there's almost like an endless amount to choose from. But the most important thing is that you get the right one for your particular use case. So you need to assess what you're going to be doing and then getting the best lens for that job. There are three main things to pay attention to. The mount, focal length and maximum aperture. The mount will determine which cameras you can actually use your lens with, as a Sony lens won't fit on a Canon camera. You can grab an adapter to convert lenses from one system to another, but it adds some side effects that often aren't worth the hassle. Focal length determines how zoomed in the image will be, with high numbers resulting in a tight zoom, while lower figures will produce a wider field of view. And then thirdly, we have aperture, and this has two impacts on your footage, as the maximum aperture will determine how much light actually gets into your camera through the lens. The first impact will be on the overall brightness of the image, as more light will result in a lighter image. The second is all about background blur, as wider apertures, those with a lower f-stop, will decrease the amount of elements in your shot that are in focus, and this will make it a bit harder to actually film what you want, but when you get it right it will give you a lovely background softness. But that's all well and good if you've got the equipment, but what if you don't? Well, chances are you've probably got a decent smartphone in your pocket that can actually take great 4K video. You'd be really surprised just how good the quality is too, as the latest flagships can shoot video miles better than your average DSLR from a few years ago. And they're more portable than any other camera, and it's the one you've always got with you. So I'm seemingly always using mine to capture some great footage on the go, and this just wouldn't be practical with any of my usual gear. Of course, you're actually going to need somewhere to store all of that footage though, as if you are shooting in 4K, the internal storage will work, but it's just not great for longevity. So recently, I've been using the SanDisk Extreme UHS Micro SD card in my Galaxy S8, and it really has worked a treat. Just be sure to check that your device actually supports micro SD cards and that the card supports UHS for best results. Now obviously having the best gear is going to give you an advantage, but something that often gets overlooked is good lighting, as without great lighting your shots just won't look very good at all and it will be a case of all the gear, no idea. When shooting outside you can get some truly epic shots and there really is nothing better than natural light especially when the sun is low during early morning or late evening. When inside, you'll have a lot more control, and it's a lot easier to get your own sort of safe space that you always know exactly how to nail the lighting down. I use a cool white light for a sort of natural look, but then I mix it up with some coloured RGB bulbs to give a sort of different, more interesting vibe. To really make your footage stand out though, you're going to want to add movement, and this can be to the camera, to the subject, or a bit of both. And it's definitely worth mixing it all together for a bit of variety. Cameras like the GH5 have stabilisation built right into the camera that will allow for smooth movement when handheld, and it works especially well when shooting in 60 frames a second or more and then slowing it down. I always use a mixture of pans and tilts for my product shots, and then even a static subject can actually look really interesting 
providing you're using the right light. Taking this a step further, you can also move with a slider, which changes the perspective of your shot entirely, especially when panning the camera at the same time. To really take your footage to new heights though, it's becoming increasingly popular to invest in a drone. Now I don't actually own one, so I needed to go out and visit a friend. To make sure that I get my story right, uh, my storytelling process correctly, the way I envisioned it, I get my, uh, my drone involved. So this is a DJI Mavic Pro, this would be 4K video, uh, allow me to get nice stable shots, nice panning around a car footage, for example, if I'm shooting a car, if I'm just shooting a beach front, for example, I can get nice moving aerial footage just to take you along with the story. And this is just a perfect tool for that. And uh, any up and coming storyteller, filmmaker out there, this is definitely a tool for you. So then that's how to capture some great 4K video. I hope it's been insightful. If it has, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Don't forget to check out part two where we edit this video all together. If it's live, it'll be in the top right hand corner. Otherwise, just wait a few days and then that will be coming your direction. A massive thank you to Gadgets Boy for helping us out with the drone segment of this video. And if you do want more information on cameras that is a lot more detailed than I've sort of listed here, then a channel I really love is Tony and Chelsea Northrup. And I'll leave their sort of link uh, to their channel in the description below. But a massive thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.